Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. When you knock a door, it means you do not have the keys to open it. But you believe that at the other side of the door is a man who has the power to open it for you. So knocking brings you to a point where you must understand the ministry of men. Are we together? The Bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of men. You may have heard me say, if God says yes and a man says no, your yes will remain in the realm of the spirit. It takes both the spirit and the bride to say come, not the spirit alone. This is the world of men. And if God does not grant you access to the hearts of men, you will live a defeated life, even though a believer. Say amen, please. You must know how to knock. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 7 and 8, please give it to us, Matthew 7. It says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock, it says, and it shall be opened. You are not the one who will open it, but it shall be opened unto you. Then it says for everyone. Now, I love this scripture. There are blessings in the Bible that are limited to a few people. For instance, the Bible will say, he gave unto some. But when it has to do with the possibilities that come from knocking, he says for everyone, everyone, for everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And then he says to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we knock, the Bible tells us that doors are open. In fact, in Revelations, I believe chapter 3 and verse 20, the Bible even tells us that Jesus himself stands at the door. Your heart is, is guarded by a door and the Bible says he knocks, even though he's creator, because he's given you the right of free will. He would not budge into your heart he would have to stand and knock and he says if any man hear my voice and opens that door i will come in i can you can as powerful as he is he's at the mercy of your agreeing to open the door remember jesus in in luke's synoptic account i believe of um the subject of asking he gave a very interesting story and he said how that there was a gentleman who came and knocked on the door of his friend and said friend please give me three loaves another friend has come and you know i have i'm insufficient and the friend said no please leave it's already late i'm with my children we're already sleeping and the bible says he kept knocking that even though he will not arise and help him because of friendship but because of importunity persistence he kept knocking the bible says he woke up and did not just give him three loaves he gave him as many as he desired you must master the art of knocking hallelujah and when it has to do with the ministry of knocking you must understand relationships relationships are powerful one relationship can close a door that may take you your lifetime struggling to open are we together number three the third way that the bible teaches that we open doors is through the supernatural the, the engaging supernatural power supernatural power and the use of force can open doors Remember what happened to you when you lost your key and you ran out of patience? The door still opened. How did it open? You got a hammer. Am I right on that? And the aesthetics and the beauty of the door did not matter at that point. The passion to come in was greater than the passion to look at a beautiful building. Sometimes you need to look beyond. You need to be tired of standing and staying and you must be willing to push through even through the supernatural power of the spirit in acts chapter 16 acts chapter 16 we'll begin our reading from verse 25 
Acts chapter 16. This is a very deep mystery. The Bible says Paul and Silas, remember, when they delivered the young damsel from the spirit of divination and the people who were making money out of the lady ran out of the market and they were angry and, you know, they sent them to jail. That's how they got there. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. 26. Then the Bible says, next verse please. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. No key was used. No knocking was used. But the door still opened. And the Bible says it so happened that all doors open. Not some. So there is a mystery that can open all doors without the key and without knocking this is god himself when the creator decides to step in over a man's life he can rewrite the narrative you may not be holding a key you may not even have access to anyone to help you but in the name of jesus i'm praying over someone because the situation in your life right now you may honestly not have a key to open the door are we together you may not have a relationship remember in john was it john 5 the bible talks about the man at the pool of bethesda who had been there for 38 years and then the bible says when jesus came to ask him what should i do for you here was his issue i have no man to help me not that i cannot move but the man to provide a leverage i've been in abuja but i have no man to help me i am gifted but there's no one i am joseph with the power to interpret pharaoh's dream but the wine presser who would speak for me and connect me to pharaoh is not there and jesus said let me rewrite the rules arise you don't need to enter the water again when the god of heaven comes by the agency of supernatural power doors can open when he comes he does not knock from door to door all doors all doors open are you getting blessed this is true so do not be surprised when all the doors in your life open after this service no you would be grateful enough if the, if it opens one door per month but not when his majesty steps in when he steps in all doors open he does not beg for keys he does not knock he rattles the foundation of that problem and causes all doors to open are we still together so these are the three biblical ways that doors open according to scripture a quick recap number one the use or the application of the right keys number two by knocking obtaining favor and help through the ministry of men number three supernatural power hallelujah now let's talk about greater doors i think we've been able to establish enough about open doors the dynamics of greater doors since we now know how doors open it's important for us to know that life is in phases please listen carefully let me have your attention life is in phases and just because a door has opened you see doors midwife realms and levels between your kitchen and your living room is a door am i right on that and just because you've passed through the main door does not mean that's the only door you will pass doors midwife realms doors when you see a door it tells you you have come to the end of a season and you're about to step into another one because doors stand as an interface between seasons morning and afternoon have a door that stands between them afternoon and evening has a door is that true so every time you make progress and you later meet a door you should not cry it's a signal to you that that current season has come to an end and that you are ready to step into a new one if you walk and you don't find a door you are still at the same realm you know that you are wrapping up that realm by the presence of a door is someone learning doors midwife realms doors midwife seasons remember i told you that doors can also be obstacles so when you have 
a landslide as you journey through life is only the victory that brought you into that realm you are still celebrating sooner or later a door will come as a signal that you have exhausted this realm it says you have encompassed this mountain long enough to turn you northwards are we still together greater doors I will give us for this service three keys that will grant us access to greater doors the dynamics of opening doors remain the same but these are additions that will help us to access greater doors are we ready greater doors will require greater light number one higher dimensions of spiritual truth hallelujah greater light greater light greater light the bible says in genesis chapter 1 and verse 16 genesis 1 and verse 16 please give it to us the bible says god made two great lights remember he made lights already are we together he made lights already but the bible says when we come to verse 16 that he made two great lights the greater to rule the day and the lesser lights to rule the night then it says he made the stars also so there were different kinds of lights and allocated to all those lights were different portions of dominion are we together now so the higher your level of spiritual illumination the higher the levels of the doors that you can access this is true when you get into diplomatic centers or highly secured uh, places the dynamics for accessing the doors change as you advance is that true yes in many organizations in fact as you rise up the lift maybe get into the boardroom or the office where the executives are the the, the dynamics for opening the doors are not no longer the same hallelujah in many developed nations they have what they call nuclear codes is that true nuclear codes and no one person has the entire code. not even the president the codes are distributed between the secretary of state i think i'm right on that the president has a portion another until they come together no one person has it all because that will be putting a nation at the risk of one man's emotions hallelujah that is because it is a sensitive they are releasing something that can wipe out nations in a moment so the higher you rise in life and destiny you will need access to greater light listen to me our possibilities in the kingdom don't just happen because of the keys we have it also happens because of the extent of light and knowledge the bible says arise shine isaiah 60 and verse 1 for your light is come it says and the glory of the lord is risen upon thee verse 2 says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness it says the people but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you i love verse 3 please look at it carefully and let's read in concert ready one to read gentiles shall come please stop gentiles shall come to if you have light the only audience you can command are the gentiles but if it's the presence of the kings that you want the bible says the kings will not come just to light they will come to the brightness of your rising so if you find out that you've been dealing with gentiles alone or ordinary people for want of word do not blame them it is what you have that is attracting them there is a kind of illumination that calls the attention of kings the bible tells us that when solomon became king all the other neighboring kings kept coming to him because of you know his dominion but there was a woman from ethiopia who refused to come she sat back and kept watching but as his glory continued to excel it compelled
held that woman called the queen of sheba and she got up and she came by herself and bible history would tell us that for six months she was around the temple of solomon when she saw the dexterity of his temple he said that there were two lions by every step can you imagine that even the spoons of the palace were overlaid with pure gold even the gold of offer the bible says when she saw everything she had no breath in her again solomon for you kings only come to the brightness of your rising whether as a businessman as a man of god you do not attract the attention of kings giving them what they can have alternative for you have to be exceptional and distinguished enough to call the attention of kings is someone hearing this morning please shout a loud amen gentiles will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising the reason why the magi came to jesus was that the light that attracted them was so bright it called for the attention if it was an ordinary star they would not mind when they saw it as astrologers they knew that this signified something and they began to follow the direction of that star and it brought them right in front of the manger do you have a star that leads men to you is it bright enough to command kings they did not come empty-handed ladies and gentlemen the bible says they came paying homage bringing gifts of gold of frankincense and of man not minding the age of the baby once that light is there they will come every other factor becomes secondary when there is greater light are we together show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path and lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter greater light number two what is the second biblical key that controls greater doors are you ready it's called faithfulness please write it down faithfulness is the second kingdom mystery that grants men access to greater lights what is faithfulness the quality of loyalty trustworthiness i wrote down here that faithfulness is a firm adherence to promises or a firm observance to duty faithfulness loyalty trustworthiness a firm adherence to promises and a firm observance to duty matthew chapter 25 is a very interesting parable please give us from verse 21 we call it the parable of the talents now jesus used parables in his earth walk to illustrate the mysteries of the kingdom and this was one of those parables the bible says the preceding verses would tell us that he gave unto one five talent uh two talents and one and all the verses before five to one and they were given the liberty to do whatever they wanted to do with it but now the owner of the talents came and demanded accountability from them 21. this is to the five now the one who had five went and made five more his lord said unto him well done thou good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things please say a few things i will make thee ruler over many things say many things so midwifing few things and many things is faithfulness few things many things mediocre doors for want of word greater and more excellent doors faithfulness many people desire greater doors in their lives but they do not know that your faithfulness is the examination that you write 
that qualifies you to the next season in fact the bible puts it this way still on that scripture we're reading to 20 23 thou has been faithful over a few things i will make thee ruler over many things it's a enter thou access into the joy of the lord he also that had received two talents came and said lord thou deliverest unto me two talents behold i have gained two other talents beside them his comment verse 23 his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant now did you notice that the size of what they were given did not affect the commendation it was their faithfulness the same thing he said to one that had five talents was the same thing he said to one that had two talents let's finish up that scripture he says thou has been faithful over a few things i will make thee ruler over many things thou has been faithful with this level of anointing i will promote you and grant you access to deeper levels of grace in the spirit thou has been faithful over this for want of what elementary levels of spiritual revelation i will grant you access to great things thou has been faithful with two hundred thousand naira you use it with diligence with discipline and a sense of accountability the way you will use two million is demonstrated in how you use the two hundred thousand there are many people who have this imaginary imagination that uh, this 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 blind imagination if i use that that expression that supernaturally anointing or money will just come in in greater proportions and without any track record of learning and managing things at an elementary level they would step into greatness it does not happen in this kingdom in this kingdom things come because of growth luke 252 in fact things stay because they came by growth anything that did not come by growth does not stand a chance of longevity and jesus increased the bible says in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men the apostles started as disciples and one time he sent them two by two they returned with a report yet these were the apostles of the lamb who would later do mighty things for the kingdom while you wish for higher and greater doors while you wish for higher and greater levels of the anointing while you wish for higher and more superior levels of prosperity most more more uh, greater opportunities strategic relationships you must obtain grace to be faithful where you are he told abraham from where thou art lift up thy eyes you are going beyond this point but respect where you are from where you are lift up your eyes start being kind to people from where you are start being faithful as a worker from where you are it is a risk to promote unfaithfulness are we together it is a risk every time luke 16 let's read from verse 10 to 12 I'm just reading the same account but Luke's synoptic account it is a risk to promote unfaithfulness there are many of us respectfully speaking who have children who have demonstrated carelessness and unfaithfulness as to the various things we've trusted them with it is a risk to continue to multiply and grant them access to increase you are corrupting them from learning a very potent law people must know the value of growth by faithfulness are we together you grant somebody a a young child a car and he spoils it in two months a brand new car let him be like moses let him carve the rock that you will write the commandments the next time god was intelligent he knew moses did not understand the power of carving out a rock and writing ten commandments in anger justifiable anger crushed everything to powder and gave the people to drink it and when he met god you thought god would just say okay that's all right i'll do it again he said moses you are going to chisel that rock i will do the writing but you will chisel the rock by yourself he learned obedience by the things he suffered are we together luke 16 from verse 10 please to 12. he that is faithful in that which is least never said will be is already faithful in much look at god's marking script he that is faithful in a little cell fellowship with three people he's saying he's already faithful 
as a branch pastor somewhere not will be already and he that is unjust in least i stole only 10 naira that's just because it was 10 naira that was there it doesn't mean that you it was only 10 naira you would carry the potential for everything was there you only made use of what was available he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much reading to 12 11 now if therefore ye have not been faithful with the unrighteous mammon who shall commit to your trust true riches look at the progression of what god gives men he calls money material things unrighteous mammon are we together now that if you are not faithful with physical things that means when god really blesses you he does not give you anything physical no in god's economy giving you physical things is just a contribution to your welfare when god really wants to bless you what he gives you is called true riches i call it the capital that buys money money itself is a product the name of the capital that buys it is called true riches hallelujah if this is my phone and i want to buy this phone i don't you know assuming this phone is 10 naira watch this now the moment you see me holding 10 naira i have the capital to buy this phone is that true now that 10 naira i'm holding or 10 dollars is also a product there is a capital that buys it the name of that capital is called true riches and there are seven of them this is not what i'm teaching one of them is the anointing of the holy spirit another is wisdom another is favor these are the true riches in the kingdom the currencies that buy money every time you do not have anything physical just know that you are poor in the spirit it is because the capital to purchase those realities are not there this is already a word of deliverance for someone why is my pocket empty your pocket is innocent nothing entered inside the bible says thou anointest my head with oil but it's my cup that shows what is on my head so if your cup is empty don't blame your cup what is on your cup is a reflection of what is on your head solomon became wealthy not because anybody gave him anything physical no he had an encounter and an understanding heart with wisdom one of the 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 seven uh, mysteries that the bible calls true riches was given to him unfortunately in our world today we call ourselves blessed because of the physical things we have you see in job chapter 42 when job had lost everything now you understand what job really lost job did not just lose his children look up please job did not just lose his, his uh, children his cattle something was withdrawn physically from job and everything physical started suffering because that was how god restored him god restored job by replacing back that thing and immediately job 42 and verse 10 let's see what happened is someone learning let i'm showing you how god blesses people prosperity what we call prosperity is simply a physical expression of these spiritual components that are upon you it is giving evidence to that blessing that is on you and the lord turned again the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends and the lord gave job twice gave job twice how did he measure it how did he know it was twice so when god wants people to recover he gives them twice question twice of what he gave job twice as much as he had before my question is what did he have before don't think he was talking about cattle here uh -uh. next verse i just want to show you something i hope i'm not wasting your time the bible says now watch this as at the time god gave him twice he was still sitting quietly poor physically but things started changing in the realm of the spirit the bible says then there came to him all his brethren where did they go before what drove them away from him that suddenly all of them in concert started remembering to come back to him that means people running away from you is a sign that something left you in the spirit listen if you understand this you will stop laboring in vain physically the realm of the spirit controls this realm this realm is a helpless slave to the realm of the spirit and all that has been of his acquaintance before
before before so if you were to ask why all of them like job you would say he's a rich man no there was something god gave him that attracted people physically to him that was what satan was fighting for he said take that thing away from him and he will curse you to your face now the bible says they did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the lord had brought upon him read verse 12 this is the physical expression of the twice he said no let's go back to 11 i want to finish something that the 11 the bible says ah uh, i wish we can finish up there's still an expression on 11 the bible says and all of them gave him a piece of money hallelujah they brought a piece of money and gave to him the realm of the spirit controls this physical realm because god gave job twice his wife had twice everything was multiplying in twos because of what came on him faithfulness hallelujah so when god wants to bless a man he may not give you a car, may not give you this. When, when Abraham was sorting all his children, the Bible records that to the children that he had with his concubines, he gave gifts. Is that true? But to Abraham, to Isaac, he gave him everything he had. Read your Bible, you will see it there. When it came for, you know, to sort out the people, to all the children, I'm sure he gave cattle, he gave gold, he gave other things. But he now called Isaac. He said, come. I'm not going to give you anything physical. But I will give you everything I have. Kneel down. And he spoke over his life. Why for God's sake will Esau cry as an adult? He had value. He had skill. He was a hunter. It was by his hunting skill that he came. So what was it about the blessing that he said, is nothing left? How did they measure these things in the spirit? That an adult would be crying because words were not spoken there is something we do not understand i pray in the name of jesus that in this morning service god will open someone's eyes to see that what you really need is not the job i'm not downplaying it what you really need is not the business connection there are elements in the spirit that need to align themselves if that happens i guarantee you except the laws falter but physically speaking you will watch life being played like a chess before you then you will know that the realm of the spirit truly controls the physical realm. Do you believe this? Apostle, people don't like me. Don't blame them. Blame what is making their spirit reject you. It's true. Because there was something that came upon Daniel that even the lions loved him. When an animal loves a man, it's not normal. I'm not talking of dog, a wild animal, hungry wild animal. And then you enter their den, not that they met you somewhere where they are trained them. There's no record of those animals being trained. They were hungry and they were angry. So it's not when the economy is harsh, remember the lion's den. When the economy looks hard, hard remember the lion's den. That when men say there is a casting down on the strength of the mysteries that you have surrounded yourself with true riches they are called so the bible says if you are unfaithful in fact let me get back this is where we're talking about if you are unfaithful if you ever clap for yourself because you looked at your bank account and you saw five or ten or hundred or one billion congratulations but that is a risk it's one thing for your money to be safe it's another thing for the bank to be safe they are two different things are we together now don't worry the bank will be safe in jesus name. someone just started thinking of, ah it's true <laughs> hallelujah if you were an excellent banker in the days of noah you are still going down anything that was not the ark died it had nothing to do with your intelligence and every once in a while in human history that phenomenon happens again 
is God rewriting that he is still the owner of the earth. They looked unto him and they were not ashamed. What kind of act is it that will have all the animals in the world coming? And then Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives, and they were secured. The Bible says heaven gave the rain, earth gave the rain. That is not good. The earth is submerged in two thirds of the earth is in water. When it gives up everything and then the waters that are suspended in the cloud, whatever they meet in the middle, based on that phenomenon, the ark should sink because of the sheer what was happening from the heavens but that was the same thing that was lifting the ark and it kept him up, it upon mount ararat and it remained there listen our security in this kingdom is not because of anything mundane our confidence is based on the immutability of the mysteries that we transact there is what you can carry and as we prepare to wrap up this service one of the things i believe by the grace of god even celebrating this this the wonderful things that god has done in Rogic. if there is any prayer you need to pray for this morning is among the many things that you receive god place something on my head if you are honest and you assess your physical doors you must come into um, an honest admission that there are some things that have not yet come on you Do you believe that? Ah, this man is a great man. What you mean is that he's a great archaeologist who has gone so far to search what must rest on a man's head for some doors to open. And I'm telling you, one of the mysteries is faithfulness. For someone, God is telling you, the door you desire to be opened is there. It's in prophecy that it will be open for you. Or you need to be faithful being unfaithful now with whatever you have you have a little business and you so disrespect that business and all you are looking at is oh my classmates my colleagues are now dealing in the billions you will not get there unfaithfulness is like a chain it can tie you and peg you at the same level and cause that the only thing that grows in your life is your age hallelujah praise the name of the lord he that is faithful in little you are a worker in this church serve with all your heart and serve sincerely most ministries that i know the people who later become leaders are people who started not even knowing they will be leaders but they serve with their heart they serve with their all if your job is to clean this stage do it sincerely with all your heart Clean the stage as if you were cleaning it for the president of some nation to come because it is from that pulpit that the king of kings will be speaking to the people. No eye service, no pretense. And the God who sees you in secret. Are we together now? Run away from people who attain greatness without a track record of service. They are dangerous. There is something they do not know. There is something not captured in their growth equation. That will eventually destroy what they now celebrate are we together yes. i believe in speed i pray speed for people but we need to be careful what we call speed because there are many people you will be learning that not every open door is anointed even the prison you enter the prison through an open door a door has to be open for you to enter a prison so just because a door is open verify where you are entering the door can be open and you will enter only to find out that it was the door of the prison and satan can open it gladly prayer or not he will keep the door open and many people have entered into doors believing it was open doors only to find out that it is not open again those are the kinds of doors that will break this morning. It says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the gates of uh, um, brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. There are doors that need to be broken because your children must pass. If you pass and it's just with a key, as wonderful as it is, it can be closed. But when the door is broken, that access has been given. It's not only you, but even those who come after you. Are we together now? Let me give you the third key. Is someone learning? 
so greater light number one leads to greater doors number two faithfulness number three favor the third mystery that controls access to greater doors is favor hmm. esther chapter five honestly this is a subject that i understand though just listen to me believe me i'm sorry for sounding arrogant but just trust me i understand this thing because i search for it honestly i understand the dynamics of favor esther chapter 5 give us from verse 1 now it came to pass on the third day that esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house now you understand the story the background story is that um it was discovered that her man was plotting to annihilate the jews and esther was going to you know seek favor from the king and ethically in those days if the king did not invite her to his inner chamber if she came there on her own the, the price was death are we together now so she needed favor to access that kind of door she had access to the palace but not the inner chamber of the king are we together so let's finish up the bible says over the king's house and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house uh-huh let's read on verse 2 and it came and it was so when the king saw esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight and the king held out to esther the golden scepter that was in his hand so esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter the factor favor then the king said unto her please listen kings don't talk like this this man is certainly under the influence of something are we together now what will thou what will thou queen esther what is thy request it shall be given to thee to the half of the kingdom <laughs> if you have a king that talks like this you should be afraid as citizens in that nation that he can give a woman without any counsel half of the kingdom that is how favor can work upon men favor can make men behave as though they were under a spell this is a king kings were not stupid people in those days imagine if esther looked at him and said all right truly give me half of the kingdom let me give my people there were two kings that talked like this in the bible one was ahasuerus the other was herod remember up to half of my kingdom then verse 4 now esther answered if it seem good to the king let the king and her man come this day unto a banquet that i have prepared for him the king said cause her man to make haste that he may do as esther has said so the king and her man came to the banquet that esther had prepared verse 6 it says and the king said to esther at the banquet of the wine what again is your petition can you imagine i told you if it happens only once it's not favor favor must happen again and again and again there's a difference between breakthrough and favor now the king is saying i still feel there is something in your heart that that kind of risk you took coming into the inner chamber cannot just be for a banquet what is it that you want up to half of my kingdom he repeated it again the god of favor has won my battle for me god of miracles has won my battle for me i'm a winner man a winner man is won my battle for me god of lifting has won my battle for me god of favor has won my battle for me i'm a winner man a winner man is won my battle for me listen i'm speaking prophetically to someone in the name of jesus this mysterious grace that has rested on ordinary people and granted them access to the hearts of kings may that grace this day rest upon your life 
in the name of Jesus may that grace this day rest upon your life hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.